I think it's uh, 11.30, so we'll get started. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> All right, thank you, wow. Uh, so uh, excited to speak to you today. Um, this is a talk about Argo CD, but it's actually also a talk that involves Argo workflows. And so I know if some of you are Argo workflows refugees who washed up in this room, that's okay. You'll have something to look at too. We're gonna to talk about being secure by default with GitOps, and this is just kind of taking a different approach to security. My name is Dan Garfield. I am the co-founder and chief open source officer of CodeFresh. Uh, raise your hand if you know what a chief open source officer is uh, and does. Okay, I'll check with you afterwards. I'd like to find out. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I work uh, on, in CodeFresh and I help lead our open source efforts and uh, our con contributions to the Argo project. Uh, I am an Argo maintainer. Uh, most of the work that I do is, um, <laughs> it, it's, uh, it, let's just say it's less code. I don't do as much code these days. Uh, I do a little bit here and there. Um, I'm also a, a founder and um, create, help create the open GitOps project and the GitOps working group which created the GitOps principles, which I hope many of you are familiar with because we're gonna be applying those principles today. Um, if you're not familiar with CodeFresh, we are a, uh, a continuous delivery, continuous deployment platform built on Argo. We have a, an enterprise version of Argo that uh, I would love to hear, have you check out and hear what you think about it. Um, I wanted to start really quick with a brief story. Uh, when I was a young man, when I was a kid, I uh, had to skateboard everywhere uh, to get places. And I started a business building and selling computers and fixing networks uh, and doing networking for people. And on one of my jobs, somebody actually paid me in an old laptop. And suddenly I had a laptop for the very first time. I had portable computing. It had 128 megs of RAM. I threw NetBSD on that thing. I stuck it in my backpack and around two or three in the morning, I would skateboard out into the neighborhood. Uh, I had about 40 minutes of battery life. I'd put on my headphones, had to reinstall the audio driver for uh, NetBSD. And then I would listen on WarDriver for networks. Uh, and then I would find WEP networks and allegedly, allegedly, I would try to break into these networks. And the trick with WEP is that you basically, if as long as there's lots of clients going on, you can send out a signal that says that they need to re-authenticate, re and then the WEP clients will all spray their, uh, their keys back to the server, and you can get in the middle of that and intercept those keys, and then you can gain access to the network. So I tell you this so that you know that my security credentials are very outdated and not that useful for today. Uh, and second, because getting in the middle is what we're gonna try to stop from people doing with Argo, uh, getting around Argo CD. So what are the problems we're gonna solve today? First, do you know where your software comes from? It's 6 p.m. Do you know where your software comes from? Uh, and this is a real issue in the community is the supply chain. How do you know that an image or a binary hasn't been intercepted? How do you know that a tag hasn't been overwritten? Um, you know, Docker images are supposed to be immutable, but when I point at that tag, you can switch the binary that's behind that tag. So how do I know that what I'm getting is what I want? Um, how do I know a, a programmer's machine wasn't compromised? I know of a company where a programmer clicked on a phishing link and suddenly attackers started deploying to his client's websites. Uh, so this stuff happens. Um, the second issue is how do you enforce rules on your clusters? You do lots of trainings. You do lots of automation maybe. Maybe you audit and you check and make sure. Uh, I know another story of a uh, big credit card company who went to go debug a service that was failing and they found out that the team that had been working on it hadn't checked any code in for the last year. But they'd been pushing. What the heck were they pushing? How, did we, how do we know? Um, and then third, GitOps is really great. So how do we make sure that people are actually using it? Uh, it's very easy to, to get lazy and drop out of the mode of making git commits to make all of your changes. So how do we make sure that people are actually following the process and using the tools we want them to do? Um, when it comes to security, training is a great first step. It should never be the last. If it is the last step, then it might be your last step. As a threatening, threatening turn of phrase. Um, so approaching security, what we're going to do today, one, we want to verify our software supply chain. Two, we want to enforce security policy. 
And three, we want to do it all with GitOps. And to do this, we're going to be using Argo CD. We're going to be using the GitOps principles. We're going to be using a project called SigStore Cosign. And we're going to be using Open Policy Agent as well as Kyverno. Uh, so starting off with SigStore Cosign. Many of you, how many people are already familiar with Cosign? Have heard of this? That's a pretty good chunk of the audience. Probably most of you have played with it. Um, this is basically a tool for doing supply chain security. So in this presentation, here's my first gift. I have a free workflow template for you to use. Uh, so the first thing, if you're going to use this, basically the way that Cosign works is you can sign images, Helm charts, other binaries, and you can sign it with a key, and then you can verify that key later. And so you can make sure that the artifact that you're looking at was signed using the key that you expected, and this way you can verify the provenance or where uh, an artifact came from. So to do this, uh, first you need to generate a key pair. Um, you just run cosign generate key pair, and you can specify a Kubernetes namespace that you want to put that secret into if you want to put it directly into the cluster. Uh, two, you, can, um, you, you need to sign that image and upload it to the registry. And three, we can actually automate this in a workflow template. So, I'll just show you really quickly. Uh, we, if I don't know how many of you are familiar with uh, uh, CodeFresh Hub for Argo, but this is a uh, collection of workflow templates that are focused on uh, CI/CD, DevOps, and basically automating your software delivery chain. And there is a new one in here called Cosign. You can grab this template, throw it in your workflow, and use it to start deploying stuff. And don't worry, there'll be links to all this stuff at the end. And we're going to be using that one today as well. Um, so the next part of this equation is going to be OPA. Now, OPA stands for Open Policy Agent. Uh, many of you are probably already familiar with Open Policy Agent, especially from its use in service meshes. And it allows you to create policies, general purpose policies, like this pod can talk to that pod, or this thing can't reach outside the network, or those kinds of things. A newer implementation of OPA is OPA Gatekeeper. And uh, this is a really interesting tool that sits on your cluster, and it basically sits on injection webhooks and it inspects elements and makes sure they meet policy. Um, so these policies can do things like protect namespaces, they can prevent privileged containers, they can block and allow image repos, uh, they can limit replicas, they can do all kinds of things, and they have a huge library of these already available called Gatekeeper Library. And at the end of this, I will also show you how to use it to prevent people from deploying things without using Argo. So if they try to apply things directly, we can actually stop them from doing that. Um, so with OPA Gatekeeper, basically you apply your manifest, the admission webhook picks these things up, it checks against a constraint, uh, and then it uh, enforces or doesn't enforce or, or allows things to be deployed onto the scheduler. Um, if you're using this with Argo CD, the first thing that you'll notice is that the way that OPA Gatekeeper works is that for each template, policy template, it actually creates a custom resource definition. Now, everybody knows that if you're using Argo CD and you have a bunch of custom resource definitions, you just need to like, think through it um, because uh, you need to make sure that your custom resource definitions are applied before your custom resources. Um, so uh, for applying these resources, I have a couple of policies that I've already set. And uh, I'll just show you I've got a policy, for example, that only allows uh, images from my Today Was Awesome repo. This is a policy I've already set up on my cluster. And if I were to try to apply this, and let's just do this with, um, let's see, examples, pod, restrict. And I'm going to send this into my secure namespace. Now you can apply it to all namespaces for the sake of the demo. I did it that way. And I'm going to do a dry run. And on this one, I'm going to do a dry run equals server. Uh, so this will try to apply my pod that shouldn't be allowed. And you can see that it's been forbidden. An admission webhook has picked up and said, hey, uh, you're actually using the latest tag. That is a GitOps no-no. Do not use floating tags, right? So we've detected that. We've blocked it. And we've detected that it's not from the expected repository. Um, and so you can, have, you can have these mixed and match, and, and uh, you can see how it works. Now, with Argo CD today, in 2.4 and lower, the way that we actually validate resources is we actually do a dry run client. Now, what happens if I do a dry run client? Is it going to pick it up? No. 
there's nothing for it to test against because the constraints are on the cluster. Now, that means that when we sync these resources with Argo CD, we're going to have failures, and it's going to, it's going to flag them as failed. It's not going to allow them through, but it's going to show up as essentially, uh, if it's a pod, it will show up as just progressing. It'll be stuck in progressing. Um, if a specific resource failed to apply, then it will flag that resource. But starting with Argo 2.5, and we should be able to start cutting the release for 2.5 this week. That doesn't mean it's being released this week. I mean, we're starting the branch, the release branch this week. Um, it will actually do uh, server-side uh, dry runs, which means that it will actually pick up on and, and throw errors earlier uh, and have better support for using injection webhooks and things like that anyway. All right. So uh, we just saw how we can use Gatekeeper to prevent things from getting deployed. So what about with CI CD? I'm going to show you a slide, and it's going to be really intimidating. I'm so sorry. Delivering software is complicated sometimes. There's a lot going on here. So starting off with number one, we've got our application repo. This is where my application engineers are working. They're making changes. When they cut a release, this is going to trigger CI CD. And in this case, I'm using um, CodeFresh has a version of Argo workflows that is hosted that I'm going to be using because it's sort of optimized for DevOps and it takes care of my events and stuff for me, so it's convenient. Um, we're going to run our build. This is going to build our image. Then we're going to run the cosign template to sign that image, which will then be pushed up to Docker Hub, uh, at which point we can trigger three, which is to add a new release to our GitOps repo, where we've actually defined what should be deployed, um, at which point Argo will uh, try to deploy that and uh, Gatekeeper will step in and examine the policies that are there. So once that's done, it'll deploy the resources or reject them, depending on what I'm deploying. So um, I've got a release here ready to cut, and uh, I've marked it as v1.0.1 secure. I'll go ahead and publish this release. Now, once I publish this, um, I should see my workflow kick off relatively quick here. I said relatively quick here. The Wi-Fi is, uh, you know, an issue sometimes. All right, we can see that this is kicked off, and it's building, and it's going to build that Docker image. And as soon as it does, it's going to kick off the cosign and push it up to my Docker registry. Um, now, while we're doing that, we can actually prepare the release. So I've got my OSS secure repo here with links to everything from this talk, as well as links to the slides. Uh, so uh, feel free to use that. Uh, and I'm going to go into my source repo, manifests, and in this case, I'm using the demo accept app, and I'm deploying it to the OSS secure server, and I will edit this customization. And when I do, I'm going to specify the new version, which is, I think, 1.0.1 .1 secure. If it's done baking, yes, it looks like it's done baking that. We can see that it signed the image here uh, and pushed the signature. All right. So um, once I've done this, I can go and kick off deploy new secure version. Now, actually, uh, normally I would use like Argo CD image updater or some other maybe CI CD to automate the creation of the deploy, but everybody likes looking at. Uh, pull requests being merged live. So we just did it. Um, merge your own pull request, give yourself a high five, feel good about yourself. Uh, and now we're going to go over and look at our applications and our demo accept app. Um, now, we can see this last synced 14 hours ago. And we'll trigger a refresh, even though it actually would do it automatically. It would get there. Wait for a second, and this should trigger and kick off. Now, what am I expecting to see? It should just work. So this is actually not that fun to look at. <laughs> so what if we deployed something that wasn't going to work? Um, how would that look? Uh, so let's do this one again, except now, instead of deploying the new secure version, I'm going to be deploying an out-of-date version. right? So um, to do this, we'll go back and edit our file again. And instead of doing the secure version, I'm going to be doing the blue version. Go blue. It's not secure. Fun. 
And we'll, we'll commit that one directly because nobody laughed at my joke about merging my own pull requests. Uh, OK, so uh, we'll trigger the sync again really quick. Uh, again, it would pick up automatically. And now it's going to start going. And you can see it's going to be stuck in progressing because guess what? We can't deploy it because it is denied because the check image signature has failed. No matching signatures found. So you saw that it worked. And then I showed that I could break it. OK, so everybody's, oh, thank you. Yes, yes, <laughs> smooth demos. Smooth demos are good. So you can see this is actually fairly simple to implement. And from your developer's perspective, once you've implemented it, it's basically in the background. They don't even know about it. It's just getting verified automatically. And you can apply this to uh, a lot of, there's a big push to get more community images to be signed so you can verify their signatures. Um, and of course, you could build them and push them into your own repo. And you could push them into your own repo while verifying them. Um, you could also make verification contingent upon security checks. You could do image scanning and all these other things and then say, and uh, we didn't, we're not really going to go into this, but within Cosign, you can make attestations. So attestations would allow you to say who made it. In this case, this secret lives on my Argo workflows instance that is sitting on my AWS cluster um, that I have managed in CodeFresh. Um, and so I've verified its provenance. But I can make attestations and say, this has passed these kinds of security scans. Uh, I can verify that all the commits were um, securely done and that they were all signed. Uh, so you can do all kinds of interesting things. You could actually take it even farther. So um, we just did it live. Oh, yeah, I was supposed to show that slide before I did it live, because it's a cool slide. Um, all right, so using OPA with Argo CD. So uh, <laughs> this is uh, one of those talks where I do the demo in the middle, and then I explain it. So hopefully everybody's feeling, oh, yeah, that made sense. Everything seems smooth. So how do I actually make it work? Um, Within Kubernetes, I think of there are essentially two kinds of resources. And I made up these terms. So you're not going to Google this and be like, oh, what kind of resource is this? But this is the way I think about it. There are fragile resources. And these are things that are, once they are started broken, they will stay broken. And a good example is um, an ingress getting the wrong class uh, because it's been applied out of order. This is something that Tuj actually brought up to me uh, like a month ago as, as a common issue of making sure these resources applied in order. Um, the other kind are what I think of as resilient resources. These are resources that if failures occur because things are out of order, they will eventually correct themselves and it'll be fine. Um, so a good example of this is custom resources. Custom resources will fail to start uh, but once the definition is found, they will work. So for resilient resources, uh, for your Argo CD application policy, you can just use a retry. You just set a retry policy, and eventually it'll work. I'm not worried about it failing to start right away. It'll get there. Um, but for fragile resources, you really want to use something, some kind of dependency ordering. Uh, and so this is where sync waves, sync windows, uh, sorry, not sync windows, um, sync hooks, um, become really useful. And uh, so that's what I actually used in this case um, because when you rely on admission controllers, it actually means that every resource you use becomes a fragile resource, meaning that your policies have to be applied before anything else. Now, this is really only an issue at cluster bootstrap, right? Because how often are you going to be applying a new policy along with a uh, new service or new resources that you expect that policy to catch, uh, which could potentially create a little bit of a race condition if we didn't apply them in order. So um, bootstrapping was a really critical part of this, because in order to be GitOps compliant, I want to be ready to bootstrap and tear down and restart all my services at once. Um, so uh, we can actually demo that. Um, well, let's talk about sync waves for a second. So when you're using Argo CD, uh, with Gatekeeper or another security tool like Kyverno. Um, you can use retries on things like policies because they rely on custom resource definitions. Uh, you can apply the policies before other applications, so you can make sure that you bootstrap safe. Um, we can also monitor application sync status because uh, if we are, um, if, if you're applying resources like a service, it will fail to apply if it violates policy, and that'll show up as a sync error. 
But if you're applying it just to a pod, that will show up as progressing, and it'll just be stuck in progressing forever. Um, this also works with multiple providers. So I haven't really touched on Kyverna. I'll, I'll meant to bring that up again in a second, but this is a competitor to uh, OPA Gatekeeper. And you can actually stack these tools because they just add hooks to your admission controllers and they don't fight each other because they basically work off of whichever, the, whichever policy gets blocked, that blocks the process. Uh, and we don't have to go you know, farther than that. Um, with OPA Gatekeeper, it is possible to run audits so you can have an audit report that says, hey, these things are actually exist that are already on your cluster that are violating security policy. I would prefer not to have that happen. This is security by default, not proactive security because I'm really good at paying attention to my emails. Um, and then finally, this is gonna be a lot better in Argo CD 2.5 because we'll actually do server side apply. So the behavior for pods, failing policy versus other resources will suddenly become the same. They'll both show up as synchronization errors. Uh, so let's talk about SyncWaves for a moment and how we did this. Um, many of you are probably familiar with SyncWaves, so I probably don't need to go too deep onto it, but if you're not aware of it, there's a great blog by Christian Hernandez, who's sitting in the front row over here, on how to do uh, application dependencies using SyncWaves. You can use these, you can mix and match these with application sets. So you use app of apps with application sets under his child apps. You can make it work. Um, it's definitely possible. So uh, for applying the policies first, um, because we're short on time, I actually pre-recorded this demo because it takes a little bit longer to happen. Oh yeah, well, uh, yeah, let's do the demo first. So I'll just show you what it looks like. Here I'm using uh, Argo CD Autopilot. If you haven't used Argo CD Autopilot, it's an opinionated uh, open source in implementation of Argo CD that basically bootstraps your uh, Argo CD instance, so it's self-managing and it creates a directory structure for you. So here I'm using Argo CD Autopilot app create source, and then I specify the app source and the project, and it's gonna generate my application for me. And this is, this is basically what I showed in the diagram a second ago. I have an app of apps. I have a source app that specifies a system requirements app, which contains all the things that I need bootstrapped before I can go into the user space. And then I have a user space app, which is, okay, users can all deploy to this. They, anything they add into this repo, that's where they, they're gonna work. So I have system requirements that get bootstrapped and everything happens after that. So when I do this app create, what I'm doing is I'm creating that parent application that references a folder that already contains those two applications. Once I've done that, it will very quickly, you'll see all the apps start to show up. And if I look in the, um, my source app here, you can see that system requirements is going to completely finish syncing and deploying all of its elements before the user space. And so that means that even if for some reason I'm bootstrapping and there was something in my user space that violated policy, it would actually be caught. Um, it wouldn't be, you can also, uh, and you could, you could make it security only if you wanted to be extra. You could just say, this is the security layer. This gets applied before anything else that's in the system. So you could, you could go farther with it. So to do that uh, is pretty easy. Um, you need to enable application sync status to stop progression if apps aren't working. So when app of apps was first created and sync waves were created, uh, by default, the behavior was that if a... Uh, if an app was stuck, it wouldn't move on to the next app and start deploying it. We changed that in Argo 1.8 because for many users, that was unexpected behavior. And oftentimes you don't want applications to necessarily be blocking other applications. Uh, so you can re-enable this behavior with a config map change, which then will monitor if an application is progressing and it will count that as part of the sync status that needs to happen as a prerequisite to the next step in the process. So this allows us to set the order and make sure that resources are always applied in order. Um, if you're using this with the Argo CD Autopilot, you'll need to use a customization. It's the same code, it's just in a customization in case you, you know, haven't seen how to, how to merge that. Um, and then you just set a sync wave. And you can set a sync wave one on your system requirements and a sync wave two on the user space. Now remember, this only applies to the parent applications. So if you have within the user space a whole bunch of applications defined that have a sync wave minus one, in normal operation, those will get deployed before the applications under system requirements. 
So the use case that I was really talking about here is bootstrapping. That's why it's useful. That race condition that could happen if you're trying to apply a policy and an application change at the same time, it's like a, it's like a bizarre scenario that like, I can't imagine happening. Um, and uh, you'd probably have to take some extra steps to mitigate that if you think that's an issue. But it's like it would require an attacker to be pushing a change and adding a policy to restrict itself at the same time. So why would anyone ever do that? It's like counter to your incentives. So um, I don't think it would be an issue. But like I said, I'm just a kid on a skateboard. So uh, if, uh, if, that, if you think that's a bad policy, let me know. Um, OK, so next, there we go. Uh, the next thing is to prevent uh, applying resources without Argo CD. So I mentioned again at the very beginning of this thing that the whole approach to security in my mind is how can I get in between things so that I'm passed off as authentic? How can I just listen in or how can I inject something? So what if, uh, first of all, can I apply, if I apply manifest directly to the cluster without Argo CD, will OPA gatekeeper not function? No, it'll function, right? OPA gatekeeper will still apply policies. But what if I'm just trying to deploy stuff? And in this case, it's are, is my team actually using GitOps? What resources are being deployed that aren't tracked uh, with, within Argo CD? Um, so to do this, we can create a simple policy. And this is what that policy looks like. Um, if you can see it here, I have an enforcement action deny. This relies on a, uh, a, li a gatekeeper library con um, res uh, <laughs> Uh, so, many so many buzzwords all at once, it's hard to get out. Um, Gatekeeper's library has a, uh, has a constrained template um, called KH required annotations. So to use this, we need to make sure that Argo CD is tracking with annotations. And then we can just set our policy. In this case, I'm restricting services and pods in the secure namespace. And uh, I actually don't have that enabled right now. So let's enable this and we will push it. Restrict non-Argo managed apps. We'll push that. Oop. Merge conflicts are fine. Nobody minds. All right, I'll repush that. OK, so now that I'm pushing this policy, again, all these policies are managed in Argo CD. Um, you probably don't care that much about seeing uh, constraints managed in here, uh, but you can see it just deployed. So you can see each of these shows up as a resource in here, just like you would expect it to. Um, so now if I try to apply um, a restricted an application directly, and let's do not pod not allowed. Let's do um, service. I think it's service not allowed. What do I have in here? I have uh, reject non Argo CD application. And we'll do this in the secure namespace. And we'll do it dry running against the server. So you can see the policy applies. Ah, so you can see it's forbidden. You must provide annotations. Basically, it's looking for annotation IDs from that Argo CD sets to make sure that those are set. So otherwise, you can't deploy it. Um, if I were to apply this outside of my secure namespace, let's say the default namespace, then uh, it should work just fine because I scoped my permissions to, yeah, see, it works just fine because I scoped it to only that namespace. So, whew, all right, so uh, last thing. Bonus tip, if you are using Kyverno, and you're probably thinking, what, what, why is he talking about Kyverno? Kyverno is the competitor to OPA Gatekeeper. They're both CNCF projects. They're both great projects. I recommend checking them both out. Um, if you are using Kyverno, it mutates resources and adds a lot of information. Uh, and uh, so you will need to add um, that to your application uh, checking to make sure that you're, instead of creating CRDs, it creates these uh, mutations. So you just need to remove those. There's a link on how to remove that. So what did we accomplish? We verified our su software supply chain. We verified that no kid with a skateboard is going to come get into the middle of my supply chain and deploy something I don't want deployed. We enforced a security policy and made sure that people couldn't deploy stuff that wasn't signed. 
Uh, and we did it with 100% GitOps. We made sure that people are using our Argo CD. They're not trying to bypass the process for how we deliver uh, software. We're able to verify all these things and ensure it. So even if I have failures down upstream, like somebody getting access keys they shouldn't have, or somebody, um, somebody having permissions that are looser than they're supposed to be, or any of those kinds of things, we still can enforce and make sure that this stuff happens. And when it works, it's transparent to the developer experience. They don't notice it because they're not violating the policies. And if they are violating the policies, it then means they didn't follow the training. But remember, training was just the first step not the last one. So with that, um, there's a link, bunch of links in here. Uh, again, this is all in the Git repo. I'll give you a second to take a picture. Um, and then I want to give a shout out. Uh, if you haven't already registered for it, um, or if you haven't already done it, the, uh, we have amazing GitOps certification that is the number one in the world. We have over 10,000 students. It's probably over 11,000 as, as of today. Um, we are doing a live run through tomorrow. Uh, which is the 101 GitOps fundamentals, and then we're also doing 202 GitOps at scale, um, and all of the creators of that are here. And with that, I'm happy to take any questions. So thank you. <laughs> Have you ever seen a demo run so smooth? I mean, come on. Uh, so yeah, we've got um, just a second for questions. If anybody has a question, feel free to raise your hand. I'll keep you after. No, I won't keep you after. Oh, wow, OK. Uh, threats work. Go ahead. What kind of skateboard do you have? What kind of skateboard do I have? Uh, well, it's, uh, it's just a blank board. I'm not that, I'm not that interested. Uh, there's one over here. Yeah. 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 Is it not trivial to add the annotations that it's expecting? Yes, that, that's a very sharp observation. Is it not trivial to add the annotation that it's expecting? It is fairly trivial to add the annotation that it's expecting. Um, in this case, this works as a pretty soft rule enforcement to say like, uh, so I imagine a scenario where maybe your hair is on fire, everything's exploding around you and you want to go interact directly with the cluster and you've broken all the glass and you've gotten permission to do it. Um, you can work your way around it. That is not a security enforcement measurement when it comes to making sure that resources are applied with, Kubernetes, uh, with Argo CD. In that case, it's really about making sure that uh, people are following the training and the policy of how things should be deployed. If they want to get around it, they could, um, but you would be able to also audit it and follow up later and say, hey, why are you always doing this? So it wouldn't be in the dark, at least. Yeah. So, so what kind of policies can you enforce? And can you enforce these policies? Where do you specify? And then where do you enforce them? Runtime, deployment time, you know, uh, build time? Yeah, so you can, uh, you can enforce, Gatekeeper works off of injection webhooks, and so there are lots of policies that are designed around making sure that resources don't get onto your cluster. Um, it also has policies around pods and how they function. So for example, you can have a, pod, you can have a policy that says, don't deploy any pods that, that allow privileged access, um, and that kind of thing. So uh, in the screenshots there, um, when we show the constraints, uh, you can actually see how those policies are written. Um, they're pretty short. They're pretty easy to write, and they're pretty easy to modify. Uh, so they're pretty accessible. Um, so yeah, in general, when resources are applied, and then also when pods try to start, those are kind of the two main areas of policy for Gatekeeper. And then OPA in general, if you're using like Nginx sidecars or things, can also have policies around how things communicate with each other on the cluster. But that's separate from Gatekeeper. That's just OPA uh, oriented on like a, not an Nginx proxy, an Envoy proxy. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, with that, um, if you have any other questions, feel free to talk to me after. And thank you so much for coming to my talk. I appreciate it.